a young married couple said that they hang out a lot together and they were trying to figure out why a date night felt different than the rest of the time that they spent together. The wife felt that it was because the date night was planned and therefore anticipated. But would planning a date night really make that much of a difference? It's been noted that when couples fail to intentionally make time to be together, they experience a natural drift toward isolation. So there's a difference between we happen to be in the same room together versus intentionally being together. With a date, you have a different mindset and a different engagement. So it's intentional togetherness. And maybe even subconsciously, you feel like you meant to do something for your marriage. So the first step is to put the date on the calendar. Identify which day in the week it's going to happen and then carve out the time. One of the benefits of this is it can help you both preserve some energy knowing what's coming. Shauna Kaur in The Happiness Advantage noted that often the most enjoyable part of an activity is the anticipation. Anticipating future rewards can actually light up the pleasure centers in your brain much as the actual reward will. Keep the perspective of what you're making time for. We make time for doctor's appointments and meetings, but this is a chance to carve out time to be with your spouse in a rejuvenating and stress-reducing way to connect and to improve your marriage. So to make this happen, early in the week, compare calendars and pick a time that will work best for both of you. Now, a number of couples will do their date nights on Friday night or Saturday night. Some weeks though, maybe a Thursday night uh, would work better or a Saturday morning or a Saturday afternoon. Pick what works for you. While you're putting the date night on the calendar, it can also help to plan the activity at the same time. We have so many decisions that we're making during the week that by the time we get to the end of the week, we can be exhausted or burned out from wanting to make one more decision. So selecting or planning the activity while you have creative energy can help hedge against good intentions being lost. There was a stretch in our marriage where we kind of struggled to make date night happen. Our goal was if we could even have one planned date a month, we felt like we were doing well. And if that's where you're starting from, excellent, start there. We got to a point of wanting to be able to do dates more consistently. And so at the beginning of one month, I listed out the four Fridays of the month and started to feel overwhelmed because I didn't know what to do for the date activities. My mind went to these different options that didn't seem feasible. I learned from that experience that it can be very helpful to have a list of ideas to pull from. Make a list together of things that sound exciting to you, that would be fun to do together. This could be something outside, hiking trails. This could be theater options or sporting events. We'll talk more about at-home dates in a future video, but even keeping a list of things that you like to do at home is really great. Having done this brainstorming ourselves and had, having had many experiences with different dates over the years, we decided to put together this YouTube channel to provide ideas for other couples to encourage them in their efforts to make date night happen. We also put together a book called Continuing Courtship. It's available on Amazon. It's got 52 different ideas and it's there just as another resource to help couples in their efforts to make consistent date nights happen. Something that can help is finding a way to track your ideas. So this can be as simple as keeping date ideas listed on a piece of paper, it can be digital note, but just keeping a list of ideas in a place that's accessible is really handy. So consider whether you can relate to a phenomenon that's referred to as the Netflix rut. A couple has good intentions of being together, so Friday night rolls around, they haven't planned anything, and one spouse turns to the other spouse and says, mm, do you want to watch something on Netflix? And the other spouse says, sure, so they do. And it's good. They're spending time together, which is wonderful. But when it happens week after week, they get into this rut and it stops feeling like they're really connecting and more like they're just happening to be in the same room together. Now, if they apply some of the principles we've been talking about, it might look like Sunday night, Monday, they sit down together, they compare calendars, and they carve out the time for a date later that weekend. They talk about the activity, the husband might say, well, I've got something I've been wanting to watch on Netflix. Would you want to do that for our date night? And I'll get the shakes. These are simple things that really can help it feel more like a date. We hope these ideas will help you. We are meaning to keep them simple and practical and doable. So none of this is overwhelming or too much, but it helps you feel excited and motivated to spend time together and to look forward to a fun date night. We wish you happy dating.